Hello to Bever the Turbo through a cannon spout featuring new Waylord from Silver Tempest with a super cool jumbo size ability, reducing damage under his Pokemon by 30. Each time he receives damage, we also have our Pot Helmet, Radiant Gardevoir, and also V Guard to reduce even more damage. We're also playing 4 copies of Irida to help us search for our tool card, and also Rare Candy to do our Stage 2 evolution. We are playing our Pokemon Go Blastoise to help us do Vitality Spring, searching our deck for any 6 energy and attaching to our Pokemon in any way we like. We get to search for our V Guard and also Basic Water to help us set by the attack cost for us to do special wave on our next turn attacking with our Waylord while also tanking damage lasting more than one turn for each copy that we play. So we want to be evolving late though just because we are playing Princess's Curtain with our Diancy guarding our bench a basic Pokemon from being targeted by a boss. So if they play a boss's order on your Whalemers, they don't actually get to pull it out into the active. They don't actually, you know, you get to ignore all effects of your opponent's supporter cards including boss's order done to your bench basic Pokemon if you have your Diancy in the active spot. We are also playing our Switch cards just in case we have our Whalemers stuck in the active. We are playing one Escape Rope, one Switch and one Bird Keeper to help us swap out into our Diancy to activate Princess's Curtain ability. And we also have our Marnie, Bruno, one copy and also two Serena to help us draw cards as well, one Blanche and one Raihan to help us charge up, uh, you know, think about charging up your third copy of Waylord while you're attacking with your first two. So all you need is, all you need is to attach one energy from your hand uh, while you're attacking with your first one just because we are only at able to attach up to six with Vitality Spring. That means for your first Waylord, you have to attach an extra one onto your hand if you attach three on each copy of Whalemers on the bench, that means on the next turn, you need to attach one more, and then another one, and then since we have that many turns to spare though, since each Whalelord is lasting more than at least one turn, we actually get to have enough turns to charge up the next Whalelord, our third one, with a Raihan, with nothing but one Raihan and even a Blanche. So even, you know, flipping a coin is not good, but Raihan is actually a guaranteed, and that means that, is, that alone is enough though, since we have that many turns to spare, to attach from our hand one by one and we also have our Menifee to guard our bench one Capacious Bucket to help us search for our energy with Irida one Rod to shuffle back our Pokemon and energies and one Wash Energy as well to protect ourselves against effects of attacks if they play damage counters if they play Lost Mind Sablai they don't actually get to place damage counters on our Waylord if we have a Wash Energy attached and we have also three Incense to search for our evolutions four VAP Pass, four Quick Ball uh, two capture and one heavy ball to get our basic Pokemon. So if you can bench two Whalemers early in the game, you actually have to bench a lot of Pokemon though. Um, at least one Squirrel, two Whalemers and one Diancy. And then think about getting your Gardevoir later on in the game. It's not that important. It's more important later on in the game once you have your Whalelord evolved. So it's more important to get two copies of Whalemers on the bench fast. That, that way you get to actually search your deck for six energy and charge up two Whalelords ready to go for your next turn to attack with special wave twice in a row or even four times in a row just because it can last more than one turn for each Waylord that you play. So that's all for the deck list. Let's go for some gameplay and see how well this deck works. Okay, let's go for our first game versus Lugia V Star. So they're playing Archeops um, with Raikou and Raikou can actually snipe for the bench. They are also doing a one hit KO on our Waylord. Um, if they can do enough damage, 120 times 2 because of the weakness. So we are weak towards lightning and they are taking advantage of that. Which is fine. All we need to do is play our Menifee. And that is going to save us a lot. Um, if they play enough powerful on the Lugia though, they can still one-shot our Waylord. Um, you know, in addition to the Raikou. So Raikou is only doing 240 damage though. So we can actually tank if we have a Pot Helmet. V Guard doesn't work against Raikou because it's not a V. It's not a V Pokemon. Uh, Gardevoir as well. So against one price cards, one pri one price attackers, we actually only are able to reduce damage with the ability with Waylord's ability and also Pot Helmet. V Guard and Gardevoir does not work. So we can reduce up to 60 damage with those cards and also having 200 HP means 240 damage with um, Raikou's amazing, I forgot the attack, but amazing Raikou's attack is not enough to kill our Waylord with one hit as long as we can get our tool card attached. So having two tool cards attached to both Waylords could be a bit difficult. So they may do a boss on the other one at some point in the game.
if you don't get your Irida, you would buy, uh, you know, you would eventually get your incense um, rare candy anyways. So it's not too, it's nothing to worry about because we have our Marty Bruno to, to fall back on. If we got no Irida or rare candy early game, we can still draw cards with Serena as well. And eventually get our Blastoise by our second turn. If we can do it on our second turn, that would be grand. Because that means we can already get enough energy to charge up two Whalemers on the bench. And, you know, have two Whalards ready to attack on the next turn. That's like a really, really big deal. Obviously, we actually need four energies though. That means we need, actually, we need eight energies. If we don't already attach one from our hand to the Whalemer before using the ability we actually need one more from our hand on the next turn. If we did attach on the same turn while playing the ability, that means we just need one more energy on the next turn to satisfy the attack cost for both Waylords. And then after that, we can actually think about the third one, attaching one energy, one copy at a time from our hand, one by one. By that time though, we would have no, not that many energies left inside the deck or in our hand. If we don't have energies in the deck, we can't actually attach from our hand. If we can't search for it, if we have Irida and Capacious Bucket but no basic water left inside the deck, then we can't actually attach from our hand onto the Waylord. So the third one is a bit tricky to play. If you are forced to play Hydro Pump, sometimes you actually have to, um, you can actually play Diancy, you know, protect your, um, you, you can't actually protect Blastoise, my bad. So if you do Vitality Spring a second time, you actually run the risk of them playing a boss on the next turn to kill off your Blastoise right after you charge up the energy, you know, search for your capture and attach it to your Blastoise because 90 damage is actually enough to kill off the VMAX or V-Star. Probably a V-Star, but you can't even kill a VMAX with your Hydro Pump without any water energy attached because it's actually doing 30 more damage with each water energy attached to your Blastoise. If you have no water energy, it's still doing a 90 base, which is not bad. So 90 base plus 240 from Special Wave is actually enough to kill any VMAX off the board unless if they have, you know, Full Face Guard or Big Charm cards like that to reduce damage or raise their HP. In those cases, we would need a little bit more though. So we have um, a total of 9 Water Energy in the deck, inclusive of the Wash Energy and also one draw to shuffle back our shuffle back the basic energy as well. Um, we have no energy recycler, no training card, but we do have one Raihan and one Blanche to get extra energies in the game. Um, once we've run out of them, we can't actually shuffle back that many times, but we can actually retrieve and reattach the energy from the discard pile with Raihan, which is pretty cool. Blanche as well. You actually have to flip a coin, but it's pretty fun to play coin flips sometimes. It, you know, if you get the heads. Is gonna destroy like your opponent is gonna rage quit like crazy, right? Imagine winning with a Blanche. That would be so, <laughs> so epic, right? Okay, here comes Archeops. They should be getting it by now. If they don't, we can special wave to knock it out. Um, so we have our first one. If they get enough powerful energy in the game, they can kill our first Waylord. Well, it hasn't even yet evolved, so Wilmer, I don't think is gonna survive this turn. Probably not. Um, our bench Waylord is gonna swoop in and collect the knockout after we play the Raihan. Oh my goodness! So they chose not to play um, the Star, the Shimmering. What, what's it called again? Summoning Star. They chose not to play this turn because they want to wait for another Archeops in the discard pile. Apparently, they want two Archeops uh, for them to play Raikou, I guess. Because Raikou needs three Aurora. And if they have no Aurora in their hand, they can't actually satisfy the attack cost for Raikou to do amazing Roar or something. I forgot the attack. Um, but Raikou can't attack if they don't have two Archeops. So that's probably a reason why. You can actually wait one turn, though. If you wait one turn and then, you know... Tanking enough damage with your second Lugia, you can actually search for enough energies to charge up your Raikou. I don't think it's enough though, because you need um, four energies to attack with Lugia, you need three energies to attack with three Aurora to attack with Raikou. So I feel like they really don't have a choice right there, back there. 
if they don't get two Archeops, they're kind of done for. Because on the next turn, we can already kill off the Lugia V Star. And that means they need like a double turbo. And they need two double turbos. If they have two double turbos in the deck, they can actually attack with the Lugia, but they won't be doing enough damage for the knockout. Waylord is staying alive for another turn. Raikou is not even doing enough damage though. 240 is not enough. They need 260 damage to kill off the active, but they can still do a boss. So if they boss the Waylord on the bench, they are hitting exactly enough. Well, 10 more damage to kill off our Waylord because V Guard and Guard of War does not work against one price Raikou. So they're making use of the one price uh one price roll to get past our V Guard energy and also Radiant Guard of War, which is kinda sucky, but Oh well. So against lightning decks, we don't stand a good chance because we want to be uh, lasting more than one turn for each waylord that we play. Because Blastoise is only allowing you to do it one, do a one-off vitality spring. If you don't, if you want to use it one at one time, um, you have to be very careful because you have to expect them to do a boss on the next turn. If you have any evolution on the bench without Diancy, you know, if you have any evolution on the bench with Diancy even, they can quite easily do a boss on your Waylord or even Blastoise before you can play your Hydro Pump. So there's really no point doing Vitality Spring a second time. It might as well just play Raihan. It's a bit tricky to play Raihan though because we have no training court to basically get enough energy while playing the Raihan. So it may be recommended to play two Raihans in a row. Uh, two Raihan in, instead of the Blanche. It may be better just to play another copy of Raihan. I prefer um, the variety though. You may prefer the security, but I just like the variety. It's nice to have different cards in the deck. That does kind of the same thing. But not quite. So we have our Diancy as our first active, which is super cool. And we got VIP to bench another Wilmer with our level ball for Blastoise, Squirtle. So for this game, we have a level ball. Eventually, we decided to add another extra um, capture instead of the level ball to replace for it. So we have now no more level ball, but an extra capture. Reason being, level ball doesn't work for Wilmer. So we got a few games where we got stuck having only one Wilmer on a bench, and that's the reason why... Capture works way better than your level ball. You can still search for Wilmer or even Wailord with your Irida in addition to an item card into your hand, but it's better to search for, you know, it's better to reserve Irida for Rare Candy and Blastoise, right? If you don't get those cards, it's better to expect to play Irida for the Rare Candy Evolution. So right now we're up against a Mew VMAX deck. We have no Drapion. We're only playing Waylord, so let's see how well this deck works. Can they do a one-hit knockout over and over? If they play a double turbo, they can't actually do it. If they play Melodious Echo, it's quite easy though. So Melodious Echo is gonna be the main um the main power point, I guess, the value point for their deck. If they get it, if they get enough fusion strike energy in the game, they can actually kill Waylord with one hit. They just need one power tablet. If they attack with the Meloetta instead of Mew V Max, if they don't do cross fusion strike, they play Melodious Echo using Meloetta, they don't even need um, the power tablet, right? If they have like three fusion strike energy in play and then one prized, then they would need the power tablet. Because we have Port Helmet and the ability to reduce damage. Um, they could be playing Double Turbo as well. So Double Turbo on Meloetta doesn't make sense though. They would probably have like Fusion Strike Energy and possibly Basic Psychic Energy with Fog Crystal um, to do Melodious Echo with Meloetta. They could have Double Turbo though, you never know. And they may be unlucky enough to get Double Turbo for Meloetta to do Melodious Echo. So every damage counts, right? Even if you are reducing 20 damage, it still counts. And <laughs> it really comes down to the tiny details. 
Okay, they're gonna do energy mix. No attack for this turn. That's really good news. That means Dianzi is staying alive. They have six prize remaining, which is a big plus. That means we have another extra turn. They need so many more turns to win the game. Because they're drawing only one prize at a time. So they can actually play Max Miracle. Let's not forget that Max Miracle is still a thing. And that means Gardevoir's ability, Waylord's ability, Pot Helmet, and also V Guard has no effect. That means Max Miracle with three. They actually need three though. They need three power tablets to be able to kill our Waylord with Max Miracle. Because 190 is not enough. Even with two power tablets, it's still not enough. Because Waylord has 200 HP. They can choose to play Max Miracle twice on two different Waylords and then use, uh, what's it called again? Droplet or Rikurio's attack. I forgot Rikurio's attack. Um, the, fi the fire energy cost attack. Droplet something. Passionate droplets or something uh, to basically place five damage counters and knock out both the Waylord with one hit. Instead of playing that many power tablets, because they don't actually have that many to spare, Choice Belt doesn't work as well, so... I feel like the only thing they have is Melodious Echo. If they don't play that right, they're done for. So we have only one Serena for this game. Eventually, we decided to add one more Serena, because... It adds a lot more security against VMAX decks or V-Stars, especially if they keep retreating to the bench um, or healing with Crystal Cave right after retreating as well. We got Radiant Serena for the recovery as well, so you have to watch out for those heal cards because Waylord is not actually doing a one-hit knockout against V-Stars. We're doing 240 damage, not quite enough to kill a V-Star even with a Choice Bell. Um, for low HP V-Stars though, like Alolan Vulpix, or even, you know, Hisuian Decidueye V-Star is actually enough if you have a Choice Belt. But we are playing Pot Helmet for this build instead of Choice Belt, so we can't actually kill a V-Star that easily. Um, getting a knockout for each Wilmer, you know, getting a V-Star knockout for each Wilmer is still a big deal though. Because all we need is three Wilmers, three Wailards, I keep calling it the wrong name, three Wailards to win the game. Because we just need to do Special Wave six times, essentially. And three Wailards means we, uh, you know, we are only giving them three prizes for each Wailard that they knock out. And since it's tanking so much damage, they actually need two strikes to be able to kill each copy and that's giving us so many turns to play special wave extra times for extra knockouts okay they played elisa i think and now tracking shoes and here comes creme o medic oh dear tails they go to tails So they got Lost City in play, which is kind of cringe, but um, I don't think it should be too bad. Oh my, they didn't play, my bad, they didn't actually play Elisa, they played Cheryl for this turn. Cheryl and recovered all damage from their Muvi Max, and now we have to start from scratch. Not only that, they actually played Fan of Waves as well. Which is like, what are the odds, you know? What are the odds of a Mew VMAX deck to play those two cards at just the right time? Fan of Waves and Cheryl. I mean, I don't think any Mew VMAX deck have those cards. Okay, it's not enough. I think they did Technoblast. I'm not sure what they did back there. So we got another Pot Helmet. For our second Waylord, but unfortunately we're not able to attack this turn. Let's just get energies out. Because not only are we getting enough energy to attack for the next turn. Preparing our Blastoise to do at least 120 damage with just one water energy attached. While also tanking with Blastoise as well, we can attach our V-Guard onto Blastoise. 
um, you know, reducing damage by 50 thanks to Gardevoir. And that means they need more than 210 damage to kill us, which is a big deal. With the Mew Max, so if they use Meloetta, they just need 210 damage. 200. Well, no, they just need 170. 170 means they just need one power tablet with uh, three fusion strike energies in play. Two fusion strike energy. Sorry, my math is really bad. Okay, here comes um, the energies. I don't think we should be attaching to the active anymore because it's just going to get killed on the next turn. If we invest too much energies on our Blastoise though, they could be targeting it with a Cross Witcher. Um, instead of the Wailord, so I'm not sure if we want to be attaching to the Wailord. You never know when they're gonna pull off the boss, right? I feel like it's safer just to attach one to the active. Kind of forcing them to target our Wailord in the active. But we actually attach an extra water onto the bench. Because we knew they have Fan of Waves. They could, be uh, they could have another copy or even... Play Crushing Hammer on the next turn to discard our energy. So just to prepare for that, we're attaching an extra copy on the bench, Waylord. So playing Vitality Spring not only gets you extra energies in the game, but it also compresses the deck. It thins out your deck from energy cards. That means you're more likely to get your Pokemon cards, item, and supporters. If you get a supporter from the top deck, you can actually draw cards, play the Bruno, play the Marnie, to basically get more cards into your hand and attach energy you know, get your incense, play your rods or something like that. If you don't get enough cards in your hand, you can't do anything. Um, especially if they counter your energy cards, if they play Crushing Hammer, um, Temple of Sinnoh, cards like that, you can't actually, you know, counter that easily. If they do Temple of Sinnoh, we're kind of, uh, you know, we can't really do anything about it because we have no stadium cards for this deck. We're not playing any training card, we're not playing any Rose Towers. I thought about playing Rose Tower, I really wanted to do Rose Tower, but eventually thought against it. Um, we decided on four copies of Irida instead, just because Irida is way better than any other stadium or you know any other support cards. Especially if we're playing a full water deck, you know, with that many items. So they knocked out our first Waylord, and it just got losted. That means we can't play Rod to shuffle it back. Um, which is really, really bad. So we do have a third copy, but we may have like the Waylord or the Wilmer priced. And that means we're going to have to wait until we draw enough price cards to get it out to play the third copy, which is not good because we don't even have a Raihan. So we're going to have to rely on Blastoise right now to win us the game. If we can do Hydro Pump twice... Well, we just need one Hydro Pump though. If we can do a Special Wave twice and then one Hydro Pump on the active right now, um, we actually win the game. So if they can kill our Blastoise this turn, we actually need three more uh, three more strikes to kill off both the Mew Maxes, which is kind of a tall order. So let's hope Blastoise stays alive for this turn. We just need one extra turn though. If they kill Blastoise, we're going to have to think about some way to knock out the final VMAX. So they have um, 70 HP remaining. And we can't actually attack with anything but Dianzi as our basic. And it's only doing 20 damage. We need 70 damage. So we could actually do War Turtle though. We can evolve into War Turtle and play Hydro Palm as the stage 1. Uh, with only 3 energy attack costs, so we just need 3 energies to attack with 70 base damage if I'm not mistaken, which is quite, a, you know, exactly enough to kill off the second VMAX. If we play Raihan at the right time, we may be able to do Hydro Pump with the War Turtle. We got Heavy Ball in our hand, which is not good. I really want to do Raiding Greninja though. Raiding Greninja is a good counter against one prize because you're doing a bench snipe. Um, you can even play Ice Q against Regigigas or Lunatone Soul Rock. Um, Ice Q is gonna, you know, is gonna basically counter all of those basic boxes. If they play full basic deck, you know, Lunatone Soul Rock, 
um, Clefairy as well, they can't actually do any damage to your Ice Q right after you play Block Phase Attack. You know, all you need to do is keep attacking with Ice Q, keep doing Block Phase, and that means they can't do any damage at all, they can't draw any prize cards, they are stuck with your Ice Q blocking damage over and over every single turn. And you get to do 70 base damage as well while you're blocking damage. So 70 damage is not bad. You can eventually kill off the Regigigas or Lunatone Solrock with two hits. Since they are not doing anything every single turn, you have like the luxury to do a two hit knockout against a one prize. Okay, we got Blanche. And we actually are forced to play it to draw two cards into our hand. We got a heads, but we... I th Oh, I don't think we get a heads, though. Did we get a heads? I'm not too sure. Because we actually do have energy in the discard pile. At some point in the video, though, I remember I played a Blanche way too early. Because we had no energy in the discard pile. We have no Pokemons knocked out. Um, it's quite early in the game, and we had to play Blanche just because we want to be drawing cards into our hand. And that means it's not helping us, um, you know, it's not helping us attach the energy, but it's at least helping us draw cards into our hand. So if you have, for example, two Raihan instead of one Raihan with a Blanche inside a deck for the list, it's going to be a bit more tricky just because if you get Raihan early game, you can't draw cards, you can't do anything. You have to wait for a knockout, which is kind of bad. If you get Blanche early game, you can at least draw two cards, even if you are not able to discard your energy. You know, even if you have energy in the discard pile with your Quick Ball, we have Quick Ball for this deck, so we can actually discard one Water Energy and then play Blanche to reattach from a discard pile. If you play Raihan though, if you have two Raihan, if you get it early, um, you have to wait for a knockout. Like, there's no, uh, there's no trick around it. There's no way around the price count, right? You have to wait for them to knock out one of your Pokemon. If they don't knock out, if it, you know, if they... If they want to wait until you put your Waylord into the active before they do their first knockout, then Raihan is not going to work until later on in the game. And they could be playing Marnie to put it at the bottom of your deck. So Raihan sometimes is not perfect. I would rather play one Raihan with one Blanche uh, for the extra variety. It makes the deck a little bit more spicy. And we did our first VMAX knockout with Special Wave. And now all we need is a Serena, really, right? Because they have 20, 24 damage control on the bench Mew Max, if I'm not mistaken. We got a Serena in our hand, so if they play Marnie, I feel like we should be good still. Um, okay, this is the tricky situation now. If Do they have enough to kill us? No. Because um, we killed one of the Mew Maxes on the last turn with the Fusion Strike Energy attached. And that means they are not able to shuffle it back that that many copies that are you know by now. If they shuffle back one copy with Roseanne, um, they can't play Elisa, right? So they have to shuffle it back way earlier before they're able to play Elisa, and they just conceded because um, we got our Serena. Did they concede or did we do a knockout? I'm not like I wasn't paying attention. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, now we're up against a uh, Hisuian Gujo V Star deck. So they are playing a Lost Box for Mirage Gate to charge up their Gujo. And Gujo is tanking as well. So reducing 80 damage on your opponent's next turn, done by any Pokemon, including, you know, one prize cards. So if you're attacking with Special Wave, you're doing 80 less damage, which is equal to 160 damage. So 160 damage is actually enough to kill the Gujo with two hits. If they heal with Crystal Cave, it's still not enough though, because we are doing 290 total damage. 290 total damage right after the double reduction, because we are playing the attack twice in a row, and that means we are getting we have to reduce by 82 times, right? We are doing 160 for the first strike, and 160 more. Okay, we got VIP early, which is really, really good news. Now we're going to get our Squirtle with maybe one Diancy. We should be getting the Wilmer though. I feel like Wilmer is top priority. If you don't get Wilmer, you're done for. I I think we we were kind of expecting to play Irida on the next turn. If we play an Irida, 
we can actually search for Wilmer into our hand if we have an incense already at hand. Um, it's a lot safer to play VIP for your Wilmer. Because that means you don't need to rely on incense to play a rare candy. We have no Ultra Ball in this deck because we apparently uh, get break pretty fast. So we go, our hand goes empty pretty fast. Um, if we don't get a supporter at some point in the game, we're going to get an empty hand. And if we are attaching energy, we don't really need to worry too much about it just because we are attaching energy, um, that many energy with our Blastoise onto our Pokemon. Getting that much energy into the game early means we would have a lot more chances like you would we would have a higher chance of getting supporter cards from the top deck rather than getting energies you know drawing energies into our hand we would more likely get supporter cards slash items from the top deck at the beginning of our turn okay they're playing a quick ball so lost box is a bit tricky um they are playing super fast they have cram rent sablai to collect the knockout. Um, placing 12 damage counter in any way you like is just totally broken if you ask me because they can do 200 damage with Gudra and then collect the knockout against a V-Star or a V-Max with their Lost Mine. If they play against a V-Max, they need a Zigzagoon though because V-Max normally has 330 HP now and if they do 200 plus 12 damage counter is not quite enough. So Zigzagoon is definitely a must-have for a Guja V Star deck, apparently. Or even like, you know, Gabe Jabok, uh, Old Cemetery to place extra damage culture. Horror energy as well. Horror energy doesn't work though, because you're not playing psychic type psychic um psychic type V Star. It works for Sablai, obviously, but they they won't be using Sablai that early in the game anyways. They may not have Sablai at all just because um, they need three energies now, right? They're playing three different types of energy in the deck, which is not healthy. So it's better just to focus on two different types. And then possibly get a Melanie or Mirage Gate for your Gudra to do um, Rolling Iron, reducing 80 damage over and over. If you play Escape Rope though, you get to get past the ability. So Escape Rope Serena is the main way to go. Because there's just no way you can kill a Gudra that easily. Okay, we got Irida for our Red Candy Evolution. We can even evolve Waylord, but I feel like it's safer not to. Because we have Dianti in the active. Um, if they play Escape Rope though, that would be um, like my worst nightmare. Because we have not enough Pokemon on the bench apparently. If they do Escape Rope on the next turn, they have either a free Blastoise Knockout or a free Wilmer knockout. Obviously, we're gonna have to put Blastoise because Wilmer um, is the main card we need to focus on. If we sacrifice the Blastoise though, we're gonna have to play a Rod to shuffle it back because we may not have the second copy inside the deck. We may be forced to wait until we draw something from the prize just to play Blastoise all over again. Okay, we're gonna do Vitality Spring again. Sorry, it's our first one, wasn't it? So we're gonna play Vitality Spring for um, extra energies onto our Blastoise. Preparing to do Hydro Pump on the next turn. So Hydro Pump is actually a one-hit knockout strategy. If you can get enough water energy attached to your Blastoise, you can quite easily do a one-hit knockout with that attack, but... Um, for this list though, for this build, I don't think that's the aim of this build because we want to be tanking as much as we can and, you know, um, dragging the game out and doing special wave over and over, doing big damage while forcing our opponent to do a two-hit knockout just to draw a, a, a single prize, right? That's just ridiculous. I feel like that alone is a huge enough selling point for this deck. I really want to add Ice Q and so many different cards to make this deck better, but we don't really have the space for it. We need enough supporter cards to help us draw cards into our hand so that we don't get stuck for even one turn. 
um, consistency is always top priority for any deck that you build. If you have like super fun combos that could potentially work but rarely ever does make it, there is just no point, right? Might as well just go for a, um, you know, fairly, fairly interesting deck but a super consistent one because that actually has a higher chance of actually making it. It's better to go for a solid build than a wild combo that doesn't actually work so you can't even think about playing Snorlax for this deck but I prefer not to just because you are ending your turn um, you know, with both the abilities, so you can only play it on your first turn. If you don't get Snorlax on your first turn, you can't actually do Gormandize, because if you play Gormandize, you can't actually play Vitality Spring on the same turn, just because both abilities actually end your turn. Anyways, the Gujo now just needs one more Metal Energy to attack. Um, they need the Mirage Gate though, because I don't think they have any Energy Search in their deck. They probably have more Colrus and Confis, Switches, um, to search for the metal energy, so I think it's actually better to play energy search with Melanie in addition to your Mirage Gate. I don't think it's wise to only rely on that item, that one item, just because you have to lose seven cards before you're able to play Mirage Gate. So in addition to evolving your V Star, you actually need to lose seven cards, which is a tall order. So if you're playing like a normal V Star with two specific energy and one colorless, though. I feel like it's better, it's easier to play. It's kind of the same thing though, because Mirage Gate actually get, gets you the extra type anyways. So I feel like it's almost the same thing. It's all about losting enough cards though. So we played the Marnie a bit too early, I don't think it's wise because they couldn't actually get their Metal Energy on the last turn. And now, if we don't attack right now, it would be a huge waste. I don't think we could though. Oh, we got our Wheelard. Okay, we could actually attack now. So it, it wasn't a big waste because playing the Marnie means we actually get to do our first strike. And, you know, doing 240 damage early is better than nothing. They're probably going to get their um, Colrus or Switch anyways to do Flower Select for the Metal Energy. So I feel like, you know, they have a Research even in their hand to pull it off. Sometimes you really have no choice but to play the Marnie. So here comes the Chorus. Are they gonna get the Metal Energy or the Mirage Gate? Probably by now, like, we help them. Okay. So they played Lost Vacuum at some point in the game just now and lost our Pot Helmet. Um, we initially had three copies of that tool card. And also 3 V-Guard, but now, uh, for the final list, we eventually decided on only 2 copies of each of those cards. Um, just because we need more spaces for uh, an extra Serena, you know, uh, an extra, uh, you know, Irida or stuff like that. I forgot what extra cards we have, but just to make the deck a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more solid and a lot more consistent, we have extra supporter cards to support our Blastoise engine so that we actually get to pull off Vitality Spring early. It's not really that important to get a uh, Pot Helmet, honestly. You know, you have our Irida to search for it. We have our Vitality Spring to directly search for a V Guard. So if we have, if we prize even one V Guard or one Pot Helmet, um, we have at least three more into the deck. Three more in any combination of those two cards to basically, uh, you know, Reduce up to 60 damage on our Wheel Art uh, with our Guard of War as well. So we have Heavy Ball for reading Guard of War. So we could at least tank 20, 28 damage counters, 280 damage with each Wheel Art, which is not bad, right? So Wheel Art has the equivalent of a V Star HP. And we actually did a Serena on this turn. Knocking out a Guja before it evolves. Uh, they have a Crystal Cave now, but it doesn't really matter because all we need is two strikes to kill the V-Star. They did their V-Star ability already, so we actually need three strikes for the first knockout. Um, but we did Serena instead for the first knockout. So that means we just need two more strikes for the next one. Okay. I don't think they have any more Gujas inside the deck. They need to play um, Rod to recycle the one th that we just knocked out. 
if they can play another Guja though, they just conceded, which is a bit weird. Um, I guess they were giving up. So we can charge up a third Waylord. I feel like we can actually pull off a third Waylord, and then all we need is the Gardevoir, honestly, because we have um, 200 HP plus 30, 30 damage reduction, even if they have a choice, but it doesn't work. So 200 damage is not enough to kill us. If they play Sablai, though, they can eventually knock us out, you know, all the way lord at the same time. Uh, so if they play their cards right, they play enough bosses, they can actually kill all the way lord after collecting enough damage counters on, you know, each of them. But I don't think they have that many bosses, right? I don't think they can pull off that many bosses uh, that many times in a row because they have, you know, they have more cold races than they... It, you know, they need a lot of Colorus in their deck and a lot of cards to lost for them to be able to play Mirage Gate. So I don't think it's that easy, honestly, to play a V-Star Mirage Gate deck. Because they really don't have the space for that many bosses. Okay, so right now we're up against a Hisuian Arcanine V-Deck. Um, they got Zepdos for the energy system and they even have um, Gutsy Pickaxe to get in extra energies as well. So Arcanine is a super cool card that you actually get to, um, that actually allows you to transfer any amount of uh, fighting energy attached to your other Pokemon onto that Pokemon even if it is not in your active. So it's way better than Surf Edge. We used to have a Galarian Surf Edge V um, from Darkness Ablaze if I'm not mistaken that kind of had the same ability but only works if you switch it from the bench into the active. Whereas for Arcanine, you get to transfer any fighting energy onto your Arcanine from your other Pokemon whenever you like and it does not have any conditions. And it's doing way more damage than Surface as well. Um, 90 base plus 30 more for each fighting energy attached to it. Um, it's kind of the same as Hydro Pump, right? Except for, you know, it works for fighting energy instead. So I feel like Zepdos is the best because you get to um, turbocharge with a basic Pokemon and all you need is Sonya, you know, Energy Search, possibly an uh, Elder Goss or something to get your energies and play the ability with like a Feather Ball or something. Feather Ball actually works for your Galarian Zepdos because it has free retreat which is super consistent as well, which means you get to retreat from the active uh, into your history and Arcanine to attack. So we got our Irida. We're just gonna play our Blastoise evolution right now. Unfortunately, we didn't get another Wailord though. So if we have like any one piece inside our hand, like a Quick Ball, you know, Rare Candy, Incense, any one of those, you know, any one of those many cards, we could actually play Irida to search for a Wilmer instead of the Blastoise and we would actually be able to do Vitality Spring for uh, to charge up two Waylords to get them to get two copies ready to attack um, against the Arcanine which is you know way more powerful than charging up the Blastoise. Blastoise can do unlimited damage though. If you have enough water energy on your Blastoise you could possibly do a one-hit knockout on the Arcanine but I wouldn't be that Optimistic though because they have stone energy. They have the tool card. I don't think it's that easy to kill Arcanine with one hit We need at least seven Water energy attached to uh, Blastoise and we only have nine copies of water energy in this deck in addition You know inclusive of the wash That means if we attach three on our wheel art already I don't think we have enough on our Blastoise to do one in knockout if we have seven on Blastoise we can do 300 damage so we can stand uh, you know Arcanine with a we can kill an Arcanine with a cape and one stone energy attached. If they have more than that, if they have like a search has the bath in play or another stone, we can't actually knock it out. So v God doesn't work because we're playing a one price deck. So that's the power of Blastoise. It not only gets to help you uh, search for energies and attach them to your Pokemon, it also helps you attack as well. You also get to use it to attack since we are playing water energy for this deck. So that's an extra um, selling point for this deck, an extra advantage that we have. So we're going to play Blanche um, way too early. We are forced to play that card though, just because we need to draw cards. We have no other cards in our hand. 
So let's just bench a Wailmer and play a Raihan on the next turn to charge it up while attacking with our um, Blastoise. So we're going to do Hydro Palm on the next turn to connect the knockout. So they're playing a full basic deck. They should be having, you know, enough supporter cards in their, inside their deck though. But apparently they're playing, a, you know, a, a, like a way too many energies, right? If they have too many energies and tool cards stadium with the Pokemon, they can't actually make the deck work. You need enough supporter cards. You need enough ways to draw cards into your hand. If you don't go for consistency, your deck is not going to work. Like, even if you have fancy cards like Stone Energy and Cape of Darkness, it's better just to go for consistency. I feel like they have too many energies. So we're going to play a Raihan onto the Wilmer. I'm not sure if we want to play Raihan onto Blastoise though. So they gave us a training card. I feel like the best strategy right now is to do... Because um, they could play a Zapdos on the next turn. We should have actually searched for a Pot Helmet, but we actually did Raihan to search for a V-Guard instead. So we should definitely have searched for a Pot Helmet because that actually allows us to tank. Um, even if they get their fourth energy on the second Arcanine, we would be able to survive one hit with the Blastoise. Searching for the V-Guard is not wise just because we actually need the V-Guard for Waylord. We can't actually attach the V-Guard on Blastoise just because we have only one copy remaining. So it's smarter to save the V-Guard for our Waylord. If they get a quick ball, we're done for because they have a training card. They just need one extra energy in their hand with a Feather Ball or a Quick Ball. And then they get... You know, they get enough energies to attack. If they have 4 energies, they can do 210 damage. 210 is exactly, well, more than enough to kill us because we only have Gardevoir to reduce 20 damage. Um, if we have a Pot Helmet, that would actually help a lot. So we are kind of forced to play the V-Guard on Blastoise on this turn. But we actually didn't because we want to save it for our Wailord. So this is cutting it really close here. I guess we were, um, you know, risking it just because they have only one card in their hand. I don't think they can pull off the double energy charge. Okay, here comes the training court. Tracking shoes. Oh my gosh, they got tracking shoes. They need two pieces though. They need two more pieces, like the Energy and the Zapdos. So they just benched the Arcanine, and that means it's impossible now to play Zapdos' charge ability, and they just conceded. So we got it. We got pretty close at losing the game, just because if we if we search for a Pot Helmet, though, it would be a different story, right? We wouldn't be cutting it that close. Because Pot Helmet would help us survive one more turn with the Blastoise. And then give us an extra turn to attach more energies onto our Waylord. Um, we just need an extra Raihan possibly. We don't have an extra Raihan in this deck though. So we may not be able to um, attack more than once with the next Waylord. So we kind of need to play another Blastoise. If they somehow manage to kill the Blastoise too fast. We just need one more hit though, one more hit on the third Arcanine because we can actually do our um, second strike on the second Arcanine, knocking it out with our special wave using the second Waylord at some point in the game. And then all we need is um, two more hits on the third Arcanine to win the game. It's still a lot though, right? I feel like we should be getting... Um, Another quick ball for Wilmer, and then doing Vitality Spring a second time uh, to charge up two Wilmers on a bench. That would help us a lot because even if they do a boss, we got Blastoise to attack as well. Okay, we're just gonna play our um, Switch card right now. 
an Irida as well. Because if we get another Irida on the next turn, it would be we can actually play another copy, which would be uh, you know, which would be grand. Because we actually need um, the quick ball. I feel like we should be searching for a quick ball, like a Blastoise and a quick ball, just to help us get our second copy of Wailart. Wilmer, my bad. But we actually search for a Capacious Bucket instead. So pulling off an early Dianci means... Um, okay, we want to draw cards with Dianci. That's actually way better, right? That's actually way better. So we got the second Wilmer with our Spike Draw. Because you never know if they have Marnie in their hand. If they play Marnie, um, drawing cards is better than getting the right cards into your hand. If you get like the Quick Ball, you won't be able to guarantee your hand on the next turn. If you draw cards, your opponent is actually has no idea what you're going to draw. So they may not play a Marnie. They may just choose not to play it. Because they actually, you actually are forced to reveal the cards that you search for with your Irida before putting it into your hand. So make sure you play Irida uh, carefully. Every decision you make matters. So they could actually kill our Diancy right now, but they chose not to. I have no idea why. I honestly have no idea why, because if they kill our Diancy, we actually can't, um, you know, we can't counter a boss. Even if they do a boss on one of the Wailmers, though, we got another one to spare. So I feel like we should be fine because we got special wave to do. We get we get to do special wave twice with any one of the Wilmers on the bench. So we're gonna touch V guard, wash, and all the water energies we can find. Unfortunately, we have the one. We have one remaining water energy inside our hand. We actually need. Five more water energy to attach onto all the Wilmers, but we're only able to attach four for this, uh, you know, on this turn. So I feel like we need the rod as early as possible. Um, we got an extra V guard on the Blastoise. Uh, if they boss the Wilmer with the Pot Helmet. If they kill our Diancy on the last turn though, we wouldn't have attached the energy this way. We would have attached three water, um, sorry, two water on each of the Wilmers. Right? Because that means we just need one more water um, from our hand to satisfy the attack cost. Whichever one that they do a boss on, we got one energy in our hand. Because if they play a boss, they can't do a Marnie. If they do a Marnie though... Um, we don't have Capacious Bucket anymore, so I feel like it's cutting it pretty close as well. Uh, but anyways, they didn't kill the Dian C, so it's a whole different story. And we actually get to play um, Vitality Spring for however we like, right? To attach energy however we like, because they can't do a boss. Okay, so now we actually get to do Special Wave with a second, you know, we get to do a second strike with the same Waylord. Knocking out the first VMAX. They need two hits to kill our Waylord. Only to draw one prize. We need two hits. We're also doing two hits to kill the Ice Rider VMAX. Drawing three prizes though. So that's like a huge shift. We have a lot more advantage than a VMAX deck. I feel like we can win any VMAX decks except for possibly Lightning decks. I'm not sure about Reggie Lackey VMAX because they are super fast. If they play Vigavolt, they can lock you from using your Rare Candy super fast. So be careful against Reggie Lackey. Just all you need to do is make sure to play Rare Candy fast though. If you, if you go first, you can already do it on your second turn. So they can play Melanie on their first turn going second though. So let's hope they don't get their Melanie for Vigavolt that early. If they don't, you can play Rare Candy um, before they pull off their first Paralyzing Bolt. So they just conceded because we killed the Ice Rider and they got no... Uh, I don't think they have another V on their bench. Okay, so now we're up against... Um, 
another water deck? I'm not too sure though. Okay. We got our Blastoise deck sleeve. We got our Kyogre coin for our water deck. And a water fairy deck box to represent our Wailord and Dianci. Okay, they're playing a fire deck, my bad. So, <laughs> an Arceus fire box. So, for this game, we didn't actually get our Irida because we were playing only three copies. So this is one of the earlier experiments where I actually built the deck um, using my instincts and I had to kind of upgrade the deck as we go. So this is one of the first uh, earlier builds where we don't actually have the better consistencies. Only 3 Irida is actually pretty risky because if you don't get it early, you're screwed. Right? If you get Serena, you're forced to discard your hand. Discarding too many energy is not good because we only have one rod to shuffle back those energies, so we can't actually waste, um, we can't afford to waste any of our energies that early. Especially if we have to prepare for knockouts. So it's very risky to play that many Serenas in your deck, for the draw support even. It's better to play like two Marnie and only one Serena, but I prefer the extra Serena though, just because um, against VMAX decks, they could do a sneaky retreat or switch and deny you from doing a knockout with your special wave because special wave is never going to be able to kill any V star, any VMAX or even a V star with one hit. It's only doing a two hit knockout against a V evolution. So make sure you play enough Serenas to target the same V Pokemon. If they keep retreating to the bench, even if they have like a Crystal Cave and Cor uh, Corvan VMAX or something like that, you can retreat and recover damage. You know, slowly recover all damage from their bench V Pokemon, which is going to be really annoying. Right? Because you can't actually do anything about it. We have one escape, bro, but it's not going to help that much. Obviously. Because you don't get to choose what Pokemon they uh, switch into the active. Okay, we're going to do Spike Draw because apparently we did not get our Irida... Uh, we're not able to do the Rare Candy Evolution. We're not able to get Blastoise into the game. Without Blastoise, we're not able to charge up our Wilmer. So since we have two Dianzis in play, I feel like we should be having only one um, Squirtle. So it's not wise to play that many Squirtles that early, especially if you have Dianzi already. Right, they could still do an escape, bro. So make sure you're aware of that. If you have a second Diancy on your bench, you don't need a second Squirtle. If you don't have a Diancy on your bench, you actually need a second copy because they could quite easily do an escape, bro. And if you're forced to put Wilmer into the active, just so you get to evolve your Blastoise on the next turn, you actually have to search for another Wilmer to bench. So Escape Rope is actually a really good counter against Diancy, especially if they get to play boss as well. You can do Escape Rope boss to target any one of your bench Pokemon if you don't have a second Diancy on your bench. And we only are playing two copies of Diancy though, so if we don't get the Heavy Ball early, if we have an, uh, you know, the, uh, the second copy priced, we can't actually bench the second Diancy that early in the game. Because we need the Irida for the Rare Candy, we can't actually search for the Heavy Ball. Unless if we have it in our hand already. If we have like an incense in our hand, we can actually search for a Wilmer and a Rare Candy. But we still can't search for the Heavy Ball. We need exactly the Rare Candy in our hand to be able to play the ball to search for... To get the Diancy from the prize. If it is stuck in the prize though. it's Normally if you play two copies, um, at least one would be inside the prize. I feel like... We're playing two copies of Diancy and two Squirtle, so if we have like one Diancy in the prize, we would normally have two Squirtles inside the deck. Okay, they are playing a full firebox with Victini VMAX and Senti Scorch. I feel like they're playing way too many VMAXs. So they have Arceus V Star with two different VMAXs and B Barrel for the draw support. They're doing Star Birth right now. 
getting extra two cards into their hand, searching for any two cards from the deck, which is super cool. And here comes Energy Switch. So they are doing their first knockout on this turn already. And we still have not yet used our Vitality Spring. So that's really bad because they've already done their first knockout. And we still haven't done our Blastoise. So we're gonna do our Irida to get a Quick Ball. We have a Capture though. So I feel like we should be searching for... Um, we have a Rare Candy in our hand and a Capture. We even got a Blastoise uh, from the top deck. So we can play Irida for Wilmer for sure. But I feel like we should get an Incense as well. To prepare for the next turn to evolve our Wheelord. So we got a Wheel Art and a Quick Ball, which is kind of weird. We should really be getting a Wilmer and an Incense. So always be aware that you have Manaphy inside the deck. If they do as if they are playing Urshifu V Max, any bench snipe deck, make sure to bench your Manaphy early. Manaphy is a huge selling point for this deck as well. I feel like you need Manaphy for any one price deck that you build because they have low HP to start off. If they do a bench knight um, without playing a boss, they can actually kill off your Wilmers on the bench before you're able to evolve them to tank damage with Wilmers. So with Wailord's jumbo sized ability. So we're gonna do V Guard to guard our Wilmers on the bench. If they do a escape rope boss, they can still kill it. So there's never a guarantee, even if you have a Diane in the active, escape rope boss is still um, pretty easy to pull off. It's not that likely for your opponent to get exactly those two cards into their hand, though. They actually, it's quite difficult for them to get exactly an escape rope and a boss or uh, Serena. Serena doesn't actually work, my bad, because we are not playing V cards. Wilmer is not a V card. Okay, we got our Wailord in our hand. If they do a Marnie right now, we got uh, Incense to evolve our Wailord. So I feel like we shouldn't be too worried. We have a Wash on our Wailmer with the Pot Helmet attached. So I feel like we can tank. We can go along. Um, we can stay for a long time with the first Wailmer. Okay, we're gonna do special wave right now, which isn't really that good because we are barely knocking out a V-Star. I feel like we should be doing a boss on the Senti Scorch, but let's just wait. Let's just wait before we pull off our Serena. We're gonna keep our Serena until the final moment and attach the water energy onto the Wilmer. I feel like we should be... Oh, okay. I think that's actually better because if we do the capture on the Blastoise, we can at least hit 240 damage on the fire Pokemon. And turn in 40 is enough to kill off the Senti Scorch though. The Victini or the, any V Pokemon on the bench if they don't evolve. So I feel like we should do the capture right now. I don't think they can kill off our Wilmer. I keep calling it Wilmer. I don't think they can knock out our Wheelord on the next turn with one hit. They need a lot more fire energies attached to Senti Scorch. Or the Victini. So we got Gardevoir as well, which is super cool. We actually did attach the capture. And now they need 310 damage to knock out our Waylord. 310 is just ridiculous, isn't it? And they can't even play effects of attacks because we have that wash energy. If they do a boss on the bench Wailmer though, we actually haven't evolved the second Wailmer. So it's actually pretty risky now because we may have only two more shots with our special wave. But all we need is one Serena, right? If we play Serena at the right time, we can do our Hydro Pump to collect the final prize. We just need Hydro Pump to kill the Bibarel and that's it. We can even do Hydro Pump on the Victini if they don't evolve and win the game by drawing another extra two prize after killing the Senti Scorch VMAX. So they're playing a fire type, which means we just need one hit to kill off the VMAX. If they choose to evolve, if they don't, we are drawing two prize anyways. 
So we just need to kill the V Star and two V cards if they don't if they choose not to evolve any of their V Pokemons. Because they're not even doing a knockout with a VMAX. So might as well just stay in as the basic. If they stay as the basic though, I feel like they still can do a two hit knockout. I feel like it's still possible. But they kind of need Arceus though. If Arceus is gonna if Arceus is getting knocked out on this turn, I don't think they can afford to not evolve the VMAX. Because they're only doing 180 damage with um, the basic. With the basic sense of if they don't evolve, for 4 energies, that's not really a good deal. If they have 4 energies, um, they're doing 240 damage with the VMAX. I think. Well, only 200 damage, my bad. So 4 energies means they are doing um, 160 extra damage plus 40 base. That's actually 200 damage. So only 20 extra if they evolve. I feel like they should not be evolving if it's only 20 extra damage. If they got Magma Basin though, I feel like they are able to hit more with the Sandy Scorch. So they need switch cards if they are playing Sandy Scorch. I don't know why they have Victini. I don't think they should be playing Victini. Arceus Senti Scorch is good enough with your Magma Basin and Radiant Heatran. There's just no point playing Victini in this deck. Right? It's just dead weight. So we got Raihan back inside the deck. And we actually played Blastoise on the last turn to knock out. Um, I think we played a switch somehow. We knocked out the Arceus. So that's good news. That means now we got two Waylords on the bench. Ready to tank 310 damage. We can tank up to 300 damage with each Waylord. Thanks to Guard of War, Pot Helmet, and V Guard. And that means we need... Uh, we got four hits. We got four strikes with Special Wave to basically kill a VMAX and any other, you know, to knock out two Pokemon to win the game. We just need two more V knockouts or even a VMAX and a B Barrel knockout. We can't actually target the B Barrel though, because Serena doesn't work for one price Pokemons. If they attack with Raiding Heatran, we just need to kill the VMAX right now. So Raiding Heatran can actually kill the Waylord with one hit, because they just need four damage counters on the Heatran, because if Gardevoir and V Guard doesn't actually work, that means they just need 260 damage. To knock out our wheel art. 260 is not a lot because they just need um, enough damage counters. They are doing 70x damage for each damage counter on the Arc Heatran. And they got Magma Basin for the extra damage counter placement. So Heatran is definitely going to be able to kill our wheel art on this turn. We got Blastoise still, you know, a second Blastoise in the game though. We got Blanche in our hand, but I feel like it's already over. I feel like the game has already ended because um, even if they can, even even if they can kill our first Wheeler, we got our second one to kill off to finish off the game with our special wave against the Heatran. We even have a Serena, you know. Even if they chose not to evolve the Sandy Scorch on the last turn, we could have played. We can't even play our Serena on the next turn. But they actually did a Marnie though, so... They definitely should not have evolved the VMAX. So here comes the Big Charm. I don't think it's enough because we are playing a Water type. We're doing 240 damage anyways. So I don't think any one price card can actually survive 240 damage. Not even a Radiant Pokemon because Radiant Pokemon are basic and they normally have... Um, at most 170 HP. I think Radiant Eternatus has the most HP. Radiant Charizard as well, 170 HP. Um, I'm not sure about Charizard now. I think Radiant Charizard has 150 HP. So anyways, we won against a Arceus Firebox. And now we're going to go ahead for another game um, against Dragapult, I think. I feel like this one is against Dragapult VMAX. I'm not too sure though. 
So Dragapult is doing is placing damage counter on our bench. And if they place enough damage counters, they can actually kill our Wilmers on the bench before we actually evolve it. You know, if they evolve, if they get their Dragapult VMAX early, if they can pull off Max Phantom, if they can attack with Max Phantom fast, they can not just knock out our Diancy for an extra price. They can also target uh, Wilmers on the bench by placing extra damage counters on it. So we have to evolve our Blastoise as fast as possible against Dragapult because Dragapult can slowly collect enough damage counters to knock out our Pokemon with even uh, Inteleon Quick Shoot as well. So damage counter means Pot Helmet is not going to work, Raiden Gardevoir is not going to work, V Guard, all of those fancy damage reductions, all of those fancy buff cards, you know, it's not going to work against damage counters. The only card that work is Wash Energy, and we only have one copy to spare. If we don't get our Wash Energy, Dragapult can actually place as much damage counters as they want. On our Pokemon, they can even have Zigzagoon, you know, Inteleon Quick Shoot to place extra damage counter to kill two Wailards, two Wailmers on a bench before we can evolve. So they still stand a pretty good chance at winning. All they need is to bench the Dragapult early, is to evolve and do Max Phantom as fast as possible. Um, I think I'm just gonna end the voice over right here and you guys to focus on the game. So today we're featuring a super fun combo Blastoise from Pokemon Go with our Wailord from Silver Tempest using Jumbo Size to tank a billion damage and also having Pot Helmet, V Guard and Raiden Gardevoir in the game to help us reduce up to 110 damage uh, You know making our Wailord super tanky and forcing our opponent to do a 2 a knockout only to draw one prize and we actually get to do 240 damage with our Wailord Having two copies ready to go after playing our Vitality Spring to charge up two Wailards, getting two copies, uh, and having enough energy to attack with two Wailards is super fun. That means we get to attach one energy one at a time from our hand to charge up a third copy while attacking with the first two Wailards, and then play a Raihan. All we need is a Raihan to charge up the third one to attack with another Wailard, winning the game by tanking, surviving that many turns with the Wailard. It means we get to do more times, we get to attack more times with Special Wave, doing 240 damage every single turn non-stop. So that's all for this video. We're going to enjoy it. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye for all people. Enjoy your life.
baby, uh, it's me. I was just calling to chat with you a little bit. I miss you a lot.
Thank you.